Welcome to Around the Board, a show where four board game enthusiasts discuss board game topics and news. Today's show begins with the great game debate, this time about King Domino Origins. Then we'll see if our guest, Ann Glam Scott, can stand the heat in the hot seat, after which Play Shelf Trade will be followed by a fun topic question, Playing with Family. It's our first annual Christmas episode. Welcome to Around the Board. Here are your hosts, Daniel Connors, John Theisman, Chris Thomason, Andy Claus, and special guest, Ann Scott. Now, join us Around the Board. I'm impressed you read that with your eyes covered. (laughs) I know, this hat kept falling down. It's ridiculous. It's too big. Looks like that guy from... Happy Christmas, everyone. Indeed. Yes. I look like what? What? What do you look like? The guy from the Fat Albert show. I had the hat down. Oh over yeah! Chair. Oh <laughs> yeah! That's that's awesome. Awesome. That mush mouth. Is that his name? I don't know. Oh, I'll see. Like now I'm. T- I can't get that sound effect quick enough. It would take too long to. Yeah, I'd love goodness. to find a Fat Albert sound effect. We'll do it in post. We'll do it. Do in it in post. post. <laughs> that's right. Someone told me the other day that I looked like the guy from the. Uh, what, what's his name? I can't remember the actor's name. Bad Santa. Know. No, 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 no. That, that would work too. But the guy from Stranger Things, he's in some film called Violent Night right now. Ah, uh, yes. Hopper, the sheriff. Sheriff. Yeah, well, Hopper's Arno's the Arno's character's name, name but yeah. I can't remember the yeah. yeah the actor's name. Who yes. knows real actors' names? That's crazy. Yeah, oh, exactly. Who cares about he's it? He's Hopper now. That's what he's yeah. going to be. Those are the ones that just do voice stuff. Those guys are the worst. <laughs> oh, they're they're not even real actors. Exactly. Um, <laughs> maybe not even real people. So changing <laughs> that's probably true too. Oh, with the AI like, technology, Andy, I think oh! you might. You might he knows all about that. Don't go there. He knows all about that. I am now a voice actor. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to ask you guys something related to the holidays here, real fast. Something that came up to me okay. w- with me this weekend. So, yeah. uh, so I was I was I participated in two different uh, Christmas board game gift exchanges this weekend. Yeah. The first one, the guy had no idea what he was doing. He had lasted he so clueless. long. He had unlimited wow. steals. Uh, it was insane. Which, is, which so, is best to do. It got a little it, long-winded at the end. Oh, it but did. It but fun. I won't comment on that other than what I already have. Um, <laughs> what I will comment is on the second one. So the second one we went to, and uh, it was good. It was cool, too. And uh, uh, But there weren't uh, – the gifts were – they were okay. They were fine. They weren't terrible games. But my question for you is this. When you get in that mode and you're playing a game – you, you, by the way, this is uh, – people call it different things, right? They call it uh, White Elephant. They call it uh, – I've heard it called Yankee Swap. Yankee Swap, yeah. I've heard it called Dirty Christmas, I believe. It's the yeah, idea that, yeah. you know, you you can either unwrap a gift or steal a gift that's already been unwrapped, basically. That's the, the basic gist of it, right? So uh, – Anyway, when you go about these types of things, um, and they're not gag gifts, they're actual, I mean, that's the other thing that sometimes comes up is people say, oh, it has to be gag gifts. No, no, not necessarily. Right. Um, so these are legitimate board games. Do you try and go after a game that you, A, don't know and think, oh, that might be kind of fun? Or do you purely draft for value? Because I found myself in the second one, just like people, they talk about this in, in sports drafts, right? Like in the NFL draft or something. Do you draft for a position of need? <laughs> need? Like we really need an offensive lineman, but I don't really, this guy's not the best offensive lineman. Or do you draft the best available player? So, you know, there's like, there's a quarterback and we've already got Patrick Mahomes, but man, this quarterback's available. We should draft him. I, so I, think I found myself... I found myself drafting that second way. Yeah. I, I drafted a game that I already owned because it was a really good game. Yeah. But it I, depends I, on what, what's out there. If it's a, a bunch of a low end games, then yeah, go for, go for value. So you can resell it or whatever, or put it in another exchange later. Um, but if there's really good games, like in the one that I hosted, you know, we had, uh, what, what was the name of it? Uh, Endeavor. What was the other one? Endless in winter, in endless winter. It was endless trading. We yes. had Dude Prada. Ethereum Prada was, was in there too. There. Yes, we had was it Prada. Uh, Praga? Praga. Praga. Yeah, Almanac yeah. Dragon Road. Yeah, Tenor's Trail. Games. Tenor's Trail. There were some great games. Yes, that, Zombie Fifteen showed up there. Monopoly and Disney Villainous. The legendary Zombie 15, yes. <laughs> uh, to, to speak to Daniel's trade that we just did was uh, to and to say how how I handled that situation. I was caught up in the big. Big four games, trading them back and forth. But then somebody opened a game that I'd been looking for since it came out back in 2016. That's Saloon Tycoon, which is not some big, you know, famous game that everybody's, you know, clamoring for. But as I've said before, I love Western themed games. This one looks really good and I know it'll get played. 
And so I was like, you know what? I'm bowing out of the big competition. I'm grabbing this one that I know I will get played and I know I'll like. So that's the way I handled it. But if there's no game that you know you would like, then I yeah, have that. That yeah. could make it a little tricky. Well, and that's that's what I was wondering. Does it ruin the spirit of things to draft to get a game just because you know it's got the best value? Yeah. And so well, I kind I of would- felt a little. I felt a little bit bad because I got a game that I already had, but this one was in mm-hmm. shrink and I know it's worth a lot of money. And I was like, eh, <laughs> I mean, do that. Yeah. I mean, certainly both of those are valid ways uh, to go about it. But I will say, though, uh, I was actually talking to the, about someone after the trade uh, about this and they got in a game they never heard of before. And they read the rules and they were kind of excited about it. And I told them that I feel like this is the one of the great things about this format is with a lot of things, it's all about your expectations, right? Like if everyone, if someone says like, this is the greatest movie ever, greatest movie ever, greatest movie ever, you go see it. You're like, yeah, it's all right. And then you got the movie where like everyone trashes it and you see it and you're like, no, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Right. So if you go into this kind of format and you end up getting a game that you had never heard of before, and then you read it, read it and you play it. And it's like a seven, it's going to be like a 10 a win. Book because yep. you didn't know anything about it. You had low expectations and it was great. So, uh, so I mean, there's obviously a lot of different ways to go about this and these kind of formats, but most of all, in my opinion, you almost always have upside because at minimum yeah. you have no expectations, which you're going to exceed. So yeah. that's true. I, right. maybe, maybe this is an entirely different segment. We do sometime like the yeah. top 10 things wrong with white elephant gift exchanges. <laughs> maybe, like one next, of them, maybe next Christmas we can do that on that. This is, we should, we should put, put that one on the shelf yeah. because the other thing people gave me crap about at the second one is I was like, you know, on board game geek looking at games. And they're like, no, there's no time for that. Stop that. Yeah. No oh, time. yeah, that was crazy. We had 46 people participate and there were like number 40 was still doing research on what game they want. Yes. I was like, come on, man. <sighs> it's a game. Yeah. It's, yeah. You've had an hour. Yes. But, uh, but, you know, this has been a great conversation. Yes. But, you know, I know why everyone's here today. That's right. It's right. Not for the game, but it's for our special guest. That's right. We are welcoming our special guest, the first time ever a guest on Around the Board, Anne Glam. That's right. Welcome, Anne. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Glam stands for what now? It stands for Game Like a Mother. And uh, my channel, the idea behind it is I specialize in games that can be played in 20 minutes or less. Really, any games. They're from ages two through adult. So these are kid games. These are family games. These are some hardcore gamer games. But the idea is if they are short games, then everyone can fit a really good game into their life, no matter how busy they are. Now, before they can say this, because they're going to all jump in and say this, there are no games 20 minutes or less that you would play with me. (laughs) True. (laughs) Because I would take the full 20 minutes on my first turn. That exactly thing is going to come up later. In that the will come up. Yes. <laughs> so, so, and uh, so games that are 20 minutes or less. So that means like, sorry, and like monopoly and things sorry like that. Sorry like, is like a 40 minute game, <laughs> I think. And monopoly is the rest of your life. Uh, okay. <laughs> that is true. At least it seems like it. So, so you actually play like good hobby games that are exciting. There are, everybody. there are so many, there are so many out there. And I've turned into that person in the the Target um, game aisle mm-hmm, where you yeah. see people looking at the games and you're just kind of like, oh, look over, look over here. These are the ones I promise yeah. like, <laughs> try you to wear. You will be so happy, but you kind of have to let them yeah. find their own. Yes. Their own have path. you ever done the thing where, where you're in Target and you grab a game off the shelf because someone's looking and you're like, oh, wow, this game was Dice Tower approved. It won a lot of awards. This is a <laughs> great game. <laughs> um, I not I all... have my small children near me so i get to loudly talk to them about the yeah. game sometimes so. daniel we're not all tom vassal fanboys well i mean <laughs> I, you talk about the awards and stuff the point is you point out the game subtly to them yeah yeah <laughs> not not that i have anything against board game jesus but you know right. anyway. <laughs> yeah. as he's affectionately called on this show yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and have you heard us call him Board Game Jesus before? I think I caught that one where Chris went through his yes. discussion of Tom yes. Vassell as Board Game Jesus, and it, I mean, it kind of worked. It was yes. great. <laughs> no, it's very fitting, but fitting that we mentioned him on the Christmas episode. That's right. Oh, no. we well, you can't have a Board Game Christmas episode without Board Game Jesus. Board game Jesus, that's the whole point. Exactly. We actually asked him to be on the show. He did not return our calls. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> He's a busy man. Yes. Maybe he'll join us mid-show. I think he's going to come to the Around the Board cruise this year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't hey, think I'm making it. Boats out on Missouri, Missouri Park Lake. Yeah, cruise the Missouri River. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to figure out who Andy Claus is, so maybe it's actually Tom Vassell. Why are you dressed as Santa? What's going on? Hi, 
I'm not Santa, I'm Andy Claus, and I'm here to bring all the board games to all the good boys and girls all over the world. Don't you want a board game for Christmas? No, I want a PS5. Oh, you ever think Maybe about it that? is. Ooh. Could be. Yeah, I don't, you know. don't know who no. it is. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Enough of this. Let's yes. get into the show, man. Are you ready? Are you ready to be here for what you're ready to be here for? <laughs> and, Possibly. Yeah. You tell me. I think so. Okay. Well, let's do it. It is. That's right. Around the Board is all about debating different topics within tabletop gaming in four unique segments, each hosted by one of us. A behind-the-scenes judge will award points at the end of the show. Whoever has the most points will sit on the throne and talk about whatever they want. They can pontificate. They can bloviate. They can just talk smack. Now it's time to play the game. Round one. Ready? Round one. Fight! All right, round one, we have the Great Game Debate. Debate? Easy for me to say. The Great Game Debate, if you don't know, is when we debate a great game. Sometimes we argue if it's a great game or not, but it's usually one that least people have heard of and have a working knowledge of. And today, that game is King Domino Origins, which was suggested by our fine uh, guest host here, Anne from Glam. And this... It's not a paid promotion, though, for man. Uh, I'm not sure that's on the top. will be a chat. But, it's, uh, <laughs> but uh, King Domino Origins, much like King Domino, plays two to four players in 20 to 40 minutes. Man, it'd be hard to get it under one, under 20 minutes. But uh, you earn points by collecting resources, positioning your little tiles like you would dominoes where one side has to fit to the same type of terrain and finding ways to make that score. And King Domino adds a little, or King Domino Origins, rather, adds a little more to it than uh, the base king domino and it's a little bit different than playing the queen domino if you're familiar with that one or even the king domino with the uh giants expansion so we've got uh, we've all played it we all have something to say about it and i think we'll start this why don't we start it with Anne, and then we'll shoot it around the board from there so Anne, take it over what are your thoughts on king domino origins all right I am so happy to talk about this game. This is a great game that belongs in everyone's collection. You can fit this game to any audience. The big thing about this game is it's a simple concept. It's easy to teach, but there are three different game modes. And sometimes that can be a little bit weird for a game. Uh, but for these, I find that we have used all three versions in my house. There's discovery mode where you have some volcanoes that shoot fire. You can control where the points are going and how you score because you control the fire. There's a uh, totem mode. They have these ridiculously cute wooden pieces. I know good gamers love their components. These are some <laughs> lovely components. And then there's tribe mode where you're able to use your resources to, uh, pay cavemen to uh come and perform then be in different positions on your board and then you score more points because of that so this game if you have somebody who is new to the game entirely you can play discovery mode uh the middle mode totem mode is very family friendly and then the final mode tribe mode uh i've played king i've played queen domino i've played i've played all of the different versions of king domino i really enjoy all of them I liked Queen Domino. Uh, this is much more intuitive. There are no taxes. <laughs> there are no taxes in this version. And it just makes sense how you, okay, I've got these resources. I'm paying for them. Now a caveman has come onto the board and he's scoring appropriately. So it's added a lot of um, bang for your buck for the game. Yes. Very good. Uh, look at how she stays in her time there. That was amazing. I know. Perfect. And after her, we're going to go to the the living example of staying within your time. And that's old man Chris, as he discusses that's, the game. That's right. All right. So uh, I have played King Domino, and but I've not played Queen Domino. So, uh, yeah, I actually, the King Domino, I enjoy. I've played it with my son. It's it's a game that a, uh, a kid can understand, but there's at least enough that it's still interesting for a gamer. So we've played it. We've enjoyed it in our household, uh, but that's all I'd ever played. And then I got a chance to play King Domino Origins recently because of Anne. She pointed us in the direction of it. And yeah, it's the, the there's no reason to buy any of the other ones, in my opinion. Like King Domino Origins, it has the ability to play the standard King Domino, 
but then it has these additional modules kind of like she talked about the different levels so to speak that allow you to add little bits of more strategy and, and intrigue to the game um so you know I, I can pull it out and i'd be you know i can play it to where i can play with like a six eight year old easily or i can actually add the other uh, modules to it and it becomes an interesting fulfilling game for people that are looking for a little more depth uh, one thing i really like specifically was with the uh uh, I can't remember the name of the module, but that's one. The one there's one of them that when you place the tile, different like resources get put on your tile, and then you can turn those resources in to get the uh, the caveman that she was talking about. Yeah, tribal mode. The tribal mode. There you go. Yep. And the interesting thing about that is many of them are you put them on a tile, and then all of the resources that are around them, based on the what they're looking for, you get points for. But at the same time, you're turning in the resources to figure out to get the them. So it actually takes a decent amount of forward thought to uh, turn them in, but then score the points. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I loved it. It was fantastic. And and again, the fact that you can play it, make it interesting for someone that's an adult hardcore gamer or play with a, a young kid all in the same box. Game's fantastic. I loved it. Cool. Well, what you got, Andy? Yeah, King Domino is a game I've always enjoyed. Uh, uh, I've, I've, I've thought it was a great game from the beginning. I'd played Queen Domino once or twice, and I did like the added depth to it. Uh, I do remember it being a little bit more take that-ish, I think. And uh, uh, But then playing Origins, uh, yeah, that was great. It was it was a fun game. And so I, I hate to make this segment all a love fest, uh, but it was it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I will say there's a couple – I'll critique King Domino, just the, the, the basic engine of the game in a couple ways. Um, one thing I've always thought was kind of strange is that I believe you get more points mm. for having the castle – in the middle than you do playing all your dominoes. Yes. And I feel like that should be reversed. Yes. Just a, you know, a little personal critique. I feel like it's maybe a few too many points. Uh, it's balanced wrong mm -hmm. slightly. The other thing I thought would be useful is for some uh, beginner players, especially who are spatially challenged. I always thought like having like a little grid that's five by five that came with it would be kind of cool to have uh, along with the board, but maybe that's uh, too much of an aid. I don't know. Um, overall, great game. I, I enjoy it. Uh, I will say that, uh, my, my one concern is that uh, it, it may take too long because I've played with people that just, just have AP and they take way too long. And, you know, that's that could be a problem. Uh, but not, not, not my problem. I, I've never no, had that. No, not at all. Not so. at all. Daniel, what do you think? <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to tackle that AP thing issue later, but uh, I'm not going to take my time up for that. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to bait you into it. <laughs> oh, I know. it, But it's coming. Don't worry. So King Domino has been a game that I have been on the fence about whether I enjoy it or not. Uh, it, for what it is, it's fine. Um, but I, there's, it's just uh, one. It's it's not a heavy enough game for me personally. And and then when I play it with my son, he's always like meant on it as well. He has asked for it a couple times, but it just doesn't generate the excitement that I like um, for a weight of game that way. Like I, when I play a game that way, I want it to be kind of exciting, kind of fun, things you can laugh about. But it's it's just a little too light for um, for you to really think about it. But too. Uh, but not fun enough to like enjoy and like laugh about the experience and, and kind of enjoy that mutual experience. So, so it's, it's, it's okay. This one was better um, because you had those three choices and each, and, I, and now I don't even know why King Domino exists or Queen Domino exists. Uh, they should stop printing them. If you have a copy of those, burn them stop down the buy this one. Uh, Cause it, it's all three of them, um, but it's all in one box the way it probably should have been um, to begin with. But I, I'm sure they didn't have the game in their head beforehand so so that's fair um but but my biggest concern about king domino is that how you pick which tile you're going to get so essentially when you pick the tile you um, pick like the highest value or the lowest value and if you pick a low value one you get to pick first next time but if you pick a high value one you get to pick last next time but you kind of get into this endless cycle sometimes of constantly having to pick last or pick first and not getting the tiles you actually want. So I feel like there's kind of an imbalance there. And when you get hit into that cycle, it can be a pretty frustrating moment. So overall, King Domino is fine, but I'm going to be the outlier here and say, eh, if you have kids, maybe it's good. If you don't have, or if you have somebody who likes light games, maybe. But other than that, it's a pass for me. So, Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Daniel's not going to throw it to me, so I'll just take over. Oh, sorry. Um, so <laughs> for one thing, I'm the only one here with some, uh, I believe, with some hardware for my success at playing King Domino. So mm -hmm. let me throw that out there just to say my opinion matters more than some of these people. And, and always biased. And, yeah, and uh, I also like to say that when Ann suggested we would do this in the great game debate, that we would discuss this game, I was not excited about it because 
uh, King Domino or Queen Domino. I've actually played it before I played King Domino and then and I liked it. And then I bought and played King Domino, went back, played Queen Domino again. It wasn't as good as I remembered it being. I'm like, but it's really, you can't really do much as much as you want to in the extra stuff because you still have to be so focused on building your grid that you can pretty much ignore the extras in Queen Domino and still win. So I wasn't crazy about it. You know, I wasn't crazy about looking at a new game at it. And, and King Domino Origins does it the right way. And they do everything right except for one, which I'll get to. But I really do like that there's different levels you can play. You can play it a little different. The the totem mode and the tribal mode are both better than the base. We never even played the base because you've played King Domino, you played the base. So we played the other two, and they're they're both enjoyable. And I love there's the decisions you have to make. What am I gonna do with my flames? Because they're gonna burn up the resources before I can use them if I don't use them now. And so and he's like, I want to score those later with this guy. I love how you get cavemen you can like make your own section of cavemen that'll score so that's pretty cool too uh the only thing i don't like about it two things actually one like andy said I, i've never understood the scoring for the how it's so much easier to just keep your your cave in the or your hut in the center than it is to use all your dominoes yet it scores twice as much uh the other thing is i think they missed a great opportunity here instead of making it king domino origins to make it something like king domino in the future related i think that would have been much more exciting <laughs> I love the little castles that you get in the original King Dominoes. These little huts just look like a cardboard X in the middle of your board. They don't really look like anything. And so I think they missed a great retheming, you know, hey, let's just completely shoot it out there and make it something good. As far as the gameplay, though, it plays great. So I, I really have no complaint with that. Uh, there we go. There's the right music. For when. There's the right sound for when my time is up. I was a little Barry Manilow there instead or something. I didn't know what that was, but okay. Uh, but that's well, what just, I got. Anybody have anything to respond to what we just, said? I'm just digging the hat, John. It just, it just, you is know, that what it is it just, yeah. You guys are yeah. all bringing the hat game today. Uh, <laughs> yes. Got it. Got it. Covered. Well, that was, I'll, that was nice. See, I feel like a lot of people missed King Domino origins because they think they got it between King Domino and Queen Domino. So this is really interesting to get to like, test this out on a lot of people who play a lot of games and get well and and that's a problem in general i feel like in the board game industry because you have a good game that's successful and then you have a follow-up and they have several follow-ups and the, the 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 third iteration may be the best but people by that point are just like eh, i don't yeah. want munchkin uh yeah. animal right. house or, or whatever <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea actually and, and honestly that that happens a lot also in the in the video game com in the community like the first one comes out and it's like oh it's great and everyone loves it and then they make a second or third and by the third it's actually like perfected but everyone has like they're just so tired of it by then so yeah maybe that's what happened here but yeah no i again i i think it's it's great yeah, yeah i i, I want to say i love that and said that um uh, good gamers love com uh, nice components because we all know uh, Chris is not a good gamer. We just, <laughs> I'm right. just glad I'm glad we're defined uh, that it's out there now. So thank you, Anne, for that clarification. Yeah. Is, and speaking <laughs> of that, it seems like every game now has you know like geeked out bits. Do is there like a fancy version of King Domino like made of like marble or something? Ooh, good that would be Etsy. Go on Etsy. Go yeah, on Etsy. There is yeah. on there. Yeah. yeah. That would be I think a good. He had something, or uh, Daniel had something he wanted to say about uh, AP. To, oh, or, uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Before we close out this segment, we got yes. we we have talked about Andy time before. We have definitive proof. So I invited uh, <laughs> everybody over to my house to play King Domino's Origin, and uh, John was over first, and my son wanted to play. So we're like, hey, let's let's get a game in with my son. Mm -hmm. He's nine years old. Yeah. We <laughs> that game in twenty seven minutes. And Brendan's a gamer. He likes the games, but he's sometimes hard to focus. And he likes oh, to yeah. around. He likes to battle the meeples. Mm -hmm. so yep. Games with him takes a little bit longer. So mm -hmm. instead of twenty minutes, it took twenty seven minutes. You know, Brendan time. Add seven minutes. Sure. Andy comes over. We're like, hey, Andy, come on over. Let's play. Brendan leaves. So we're still playing with three people, guys. Three people. Mm -hmm. Fifty seven <laughs> minutes it took us to play that game. Fifty seven <laughs> minutes with a. Three adults and 27 minutes with a child. Yeah. <laughs> Andy, this is an intervention. <laughs> if you well, have AP and a kid's game, then just stop. <laughs> you know, you in, in the words of the wise Herm Edwards, you play to win the game. <laughs> yes. You did play you win? to win the game. Uh, and so I do whatever win? it takes. I think he did win. He did win the game yeah, by, by a considerable margin, I believe, too. So, yeah, he's, he does have uh, that. All one. right. Well, all right. Cool. 
Might have been well, pleasant for him, but not for us. Yes, it wasn't for him. <laughs> yeah, made it way more pleasant for Andy, way less pleasant for us. But uh, to, but to, to wrap that up, if you guys out there watching, listening, have any uh, comments you have about King Domino Origins or any reactions to it, please leave it in the comments down below, and maybe we'll even talk about it again in a future episode and mention you. But also, if you like what you're seeing, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons to keep seeing amazing content like this. But so now we're moving on to our next... Two. Fight! Yes, we are. <laughs> All right, guys. So here we are uh, doing the hot seat. Uh, we've done that recently for each one of us. But now that we have uh, our first guest, we are putting Anne on the hot seat. So you guys know what's going on here. And here it so is, the legendary hot, intro. Hot, 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 hot. I said it's getting hot in here. So hot. It's hot. Damn hot, real hot. Hot, hot, hot. So hot right now. That's hot. <laughs> so, Anne, I, I, I don't know if you watch our other ones, but basically that uh, intro, I think, is extremely way too long. But Mugatu from Zoolander and, uh, oh, no, I forgot her name. Paris What's Hilton. The girl at the end? Paris, Paris, Paris Hilton at the yeah. end is, is the only hot. reason the saving grace of that intro. So. <laughs> well, what would opinion. you cut? What would you cut? I mean, yeah, exactly. I would cut everything but those two. <laughs> I'm gonna cut you. <laughs> Easy now. Whoa, 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 whoa! Uh, I'm down dirty, Santa. I'll cut you, man! I cut yeah. you. <laughs> All, All right. right. Well, we, I'm we start gonna start right? off the hot seat here. So, you ready? Maybe. Let's see. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Well, I'm gonna go with the uh, the nice softball to start you off. I'm gonna be nice here. So, exactly, how did you come up with your channel's name? Uh, we had a lot of different ideas for names. I was bouncing them off my husband and uh if at first it was just going to be a website i was not planning on um putting myself on youtube and filming videos for the internet uh and then uh we had ideas for game like game like this and then i was like well game like a mother and then there's this nice <laughs> acronym and once we found it that was that was it and there was no looking back Awesome. Yeah, no, that, that totally tracks because again, yeah, just the first time I heard it, I was just like, wow. So yeah, like I, I can only imagine the first time it, that the moment hit your brain, you were just like, that, that, that's yeah, exactly. I know that's, that's totally where you know sense. when it's arrived. Yeah, yeah. that's beautiful. So and glam and glam glam like a mother. I, do you have like do you have like crazy followers like fanboys like uh uh and if so, are they called and glamicans? Like, uh Anglicans? there's there are some very committed people who comment on a lot of videos and a few email me uh but nobody nobody's come up with a name for themselves yet and i'd say um homeschool parents uh play a ton of board games and i didn't realize this until i started the channel and because it's such a great easy way if you're especially if you're focused on kid games uh uh, King Domino, lots of fun math skills there at the end. If you have an elementary schooler, that's pretty handy. It's a fun way to practice math. So uh, I have a number that message me and uh, I really, I really enjoy it. But no, no one's come up with a name yet. So if you guys want to yeah. help out with that, uh, I'm, I'm sure people would be very appreciative. Well, we're working on ours as well. So maybe around okay. the Bordians, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I know we're called yeah. Podtestants, right? So yes. you're an that's right. Podtestant. Honorary Podtestant. That's a horrible name. Okay. So uh, would you rather uh, play 100 new games in a year or one game 100 times? Uh, Answer right. Answer right, Ann. <laughs> I mean, I do both. <laughs> um, so, uh, I mean, okay, I know, I know what Chris wants. <laughs> we're going to play the same game over and over, yeah? Yeah. Um, I think I played a hundred new games. Uh, well, these games are so quick. Some of them, you play them a couple times and uh, they're really fun. I've been doing a lot of Funko stocking stuffers. That's what I did in October. Ooh. And uh, those were, I was very impressed by those because they were uh, super quick to learn, but they were fun and they had unique gameplay elements. So they were, they were surprisingly solid for like a cute little stick it in the stocking kind of present. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I play, uh, probably a hundred, a hundred different games in, in a year would be my, because I, because I do, 
but I also have played, um, I'm, I'm nursing, a, a welcome to, uh, addiction. And, Ooh. uh, oh, that's it. one of, that's one of the few games I mostly play with people, but I've been playing it on a board game arena oh, and I'm, gotcha. I'm well over 100 plays. Funny, uh, funny little story. I won't take too much time, but, uh, I, I taught, uh, welcome to, to, uh, uh, we had some international students over and I taught that to them and, and going along with the homeschool theme, we played that they were, they were all excited to play. Cause we just, we just played like secret Hitler and some other, uh, you know, uh, secret role games. And so I was like, Oh, let's play this one. It's a great group game. And then we played it. And one of them was like, I feel like I just took a math test. <laughs> I really did was not like happy. math. I was like, okay. Cool. Well, so maybe that's, that's maybe great. that's part of it. Uh, two comments real quick, and first of all, thank you for donning the dice earrings for this show. Yeah. That's very uh, awesome. Thank you. I was you. wondering if those would get worn today. And oh, then yeah. uh, number two, a great name for your followers would just be simply The Glamorous was being, is number two. And I'm not going to filibuster anymore. I'm going to come up with a question, and that is going to be, what is the heaviest game that you enjoy? Because the, the the what is it, the rumor about you is that you only like light games. What's the heaviest game that you really like? The rumor is, yeah. is not accurate. Uh, put the rumor to rest. Uh, I I really like uh, Unmatched is amazing. Although it's hilarious because I think that is a heavier game. And then I went to the summer board game event uh, that mm -hmm. uh, your your gaming group oh, holds. Yeah. And yeah. it was billed as the light game. Uh, oh, you want to <laughs> play this light romp of a game? Go and we'll teach you Unmatched. I thought, oh, Oh, wow. Uh, because <laughs> I I don't think of it as a uh, lightweight game, but it's probably between um, that and I think that's around a two. Is that around a two on Board Game Geek? And uh, I think Dice Throne is around the same level. And uh, uh, Welcome Welcome Two is maybe around that as well. Um, so those, I really enjoy those levels. And one of the nice things about playing all these different games is Usually I'm I'm learning new games in the evening when my kids have gone to sleep. That's when my husband and I get to get a new game out and play. Mm -hmm. And it has to be about that level or no, that easier sense. because I've got to tell you like 9.30 at night learning a new game. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's math flux was, we still talk about math flux, trying to do that <laughs> at 9.30 at night. I'm like, why are mm -hmm. they, the rules are changing again. What's happening? Oh, yeah. And uh, so probably- probably those two okay. um the most challenging game uh i don't know if you know that pandemic there's a 20 minute version of oh, pandemic yes. hot zone called, pan, well pandemic pan, that's um oh, that's there's pandemic it. rapid response that's mm. the one okay and okay. it's a 20 minute timed game and you mm. think oh that's fun it's 20 minutes and you're going the <laughs> yes. whole time so it if you played like yeah. five minute dungeon it's five minutes at the end you're like oh gosh yeah. that was a lot it's that but for 20 minutes yeah so uh That'd be that, tough. i don't know what the difficulty ranking on that is but that was uh the most uh stressful it's really fun though once we got it down a few times then uh we played it with my my kids they liked it uh but it's intense it's funny you mentioned uh, learning a new game at 9.30. That's usually about the time Andy breaks the shrink open on the game and says, let's play this. So that's... <laughs> he, he tells you he's played it before. Yes. As he's opening the shrink. <laughs> yeah. I might have to read the rules a little yeah. bit. <laughs> I refuse uh, to do any show prep or any work to play board games. So I just bust it out and say, hey, somebody teach me. There you go. All I'm right, Chris. So I, got, I, I have a normal question. I have a quick follow up to that. So you're talking about like heavy games and stuff like that. Could I ever get you to play an 18xx game with me? Uh, I don't actually know what those are, Chris. But, uh, so you know Tricker. So yeah, Tricker. Uh, it's just a so, little choo-choo game. Yeah, it's a little simple little little train game. Yeah. No, they're uh, high complex. Like uh, on the BGG yeah. scale, they're usually four plus, um, and they're like these train games where you have to like sell uh, you sell shares and invest into companies and you build track and they routinely take like four plus hours they're they're very complex yeah. games but they're super gratifying but the anyway, easy answer is no the easy answer is no um yeah. not until um 
like I just have a free Saturday. Um, sure. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I think those are, we've talked about it. My husband and I have talked about it. He's my, my primary gaming partner. And we'll talk about, oh, we have this fun game, this fun game. And then we'll go to like one of the board game nights that's mm -hmm. hosted by your group. And we're like, well, those look really neat over there. We would play those, but just, you know, not, not at this point with, um, <laughs> small children running around yeah. and too many, too many sports. I don't know why we signed them up for soccer is my nemesis. Um, <laughs> That's funny. So, uh, yeah, no, no, I, re I refer to games like that as calendar games. They're like games like you put on the calendar weeks in advance and stuff like that. They're I, not you ones you what? just pull out on a regular random night. I would want to experience it. I think that's my answer. I would want to, I don't know if it would be my go-to, but I think I would be really interested. And especially if you have somebody who knows what they're doing and can guide you through the process on my own, that sounds not sure. ideal. But if you have somebody, then yes, I think because there's a lot of people that are really into those games. And so it's, but it's just a completely different kind of. Right. Yeah. yeah, they're they're almost lifestyle games, uh, so to speak. So yeah, yeah. So That's yeah, right. so my quick actual question, so to speak. Wait, um, wait, what, what, what questions do you get? A follow up to something that John said, and I want oh, to say my word. Say Chris, this uh, because I actually really want to know about this. I was watching your channel, and you were kind of talking about some different games. I think specifically the gamers might like, and it was Cinco Linko. I had never heard of this oh. game. Like, I want to know, like, where do you even find out about these games? Like, I don't feel like they're easy to find even on BGG. So like, where do you find out about these games? Um, There's a variety of places that I find out people, the people who email me their favorite games that they're excited oh. about. I go and I check out every single one of those games. They send me links to videos. They send me board game geek um, links, they, and Amazon links. So I go and I read up on all of them. Um, Sometimes um, the Cinco Linko, uh, that was on the Dice Tower. They did a whole oh, episode really? oh, okay. where they like dressed up. Yeah. They did a whole thing. And I thought it was going to be much more of an intense game. And it's it's not. It's like yeah. it's like Connect 4, but it's Connect 5. And it's, yeah. it's really good. It's one of those yeah, games. No, it looked great. Really, yeah, really, but really good. So there's a variety. I go to um, like I've Miniature Market is my favorite, um, one of my favorite places to look at games. And so I look at their upcoming releases. Oh, okay. Um, so it's a, it's a variety of, of sources. I know because sometimes that's the thing where I'm feel like I'm trying to bring these games. That that's a lot of what I'm trying to do is try to bring these games to people who aren't necessarily hearing about them otherwise. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Well, since Chris decided to have like eight questions, oh, I've got whatever. a few <laughs> that are really quick ones. They're just, you don't, you don't have to even expound upon them. Cause you might not even you know want. the answers to some of them, but uh, well, I don't want to assume that's like anyway i'm sorry um so i'm just gonna quickly ask you uh let's start with uh, some of these uh uh more basic <laughs> games because i know you, you're into some more 20 minute or under games happy salmon or pit oh i grew up playing pit okay yeah right answer yeah, I've gotta go that's a good days. answer it's a good answer uh euro or ameritrash i love rolling dice ameritrash very okay. good if you had to go to a con, Gen Con or Origins? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, is Gen Con's in Idaho, uh, in I Indiana, yeah? Indiana. It is. Yeah. 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 I think I think I'd pick I'd pick Gen Con just based on cool. the proximity. Is that closer? Where's Origins? It's closer. Yeah, it's it's more closer. the buying con too. It's it's yeah. interesting. They're both yeah. Oh, okay. No. All I the new stuff's been. usually released at Gen Con. Oh, ooh, I yeah. don't I don't know then. Yeah. 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 No, probably yeah. Not. Okay. Uwe uh, Rosenberg or Stefan Feld? Um, <laughs> I love you. Patchwork, so Uwe Rosenberg. Okay. That's true. Uwe does do more lighter games than Feld. Feld like never goes that direction at all. I don't know any <laughs> Feld games, so that was yeah. very easy. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I, I, I like what Andy did, so I'm going to do that too. I'm going to do some rapid fire ones here. So uh, Christmas or Thanksgiving? Christmas. <laughs> all right. Z Garcia or Tom Vassell? Ooh. Z Garcia, he likes the little card games, and those are those are my jam. Does. That's fair. And then, uh, what is your number thirteen game of all time? Yeah, that's not a quick question. Uh, <laughs> number thirteen of all time. Yeah. Um, I wrote down a bunch of games. They're not ranked because <laughs> how do you, how do you number right. your 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 children that you love? Exactly. Um, but I'd say I guess Hearts, just classic some of the classic Ooh, card games. Interesting. Around, I grew up playing Hearts. 
I love just a classic card game. I get crabby every time they come out with a specialty deck for a new card game that I grew up playing until I until I play with the specialty deck and I realize that they've added a lot to the game and it's better. So, um, but I'm always a little bit. So, I, but I grew up playing hearts. I still love playing hearts. So I'd say that's around 13 for me. All cool. right. Uh, yeah. And I'm only going to have one question for you with no follow-up questions from a half hour ago. Um, <laughs> so, so I hope you're ready. Uh, but you, you mentioned how much you like Unmatch. What is your favorite Unmatch character to play as? Oh, I um, I don't know. I really like all of them. I like it. Um, our our first set was InGen versus Raptors, mm. and I was I always got to play as Muldoon because my son loves dinosaurs, mm. and so we would play over and over again. And I just love how evenly matched that was on their board and uh, using using the traps like that was I really, I really enjoy uh, Muldoon. But I like I mean, I like that I keep on getting um, excited about all the new sets because mm. they always have some kind of new um, mechanic or something mechanic yeah. that works yeah. really well. Um, we have the Deadpool set and my mm. son loves playing as Deadpool mm. and it's hilarious playing against him because he's cackling with all of do you the write on the card that. like it tells you to no we do not deface we do not deface. <laughs> i have that uh, i have that set sleeve just so we can write on it that's the only <laughs> one that's sleeved. You actually yeah. yeah but one of the cards if it's unsleeved isn't it uh worth more points I think oh well, hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> i think it's if it's sleeved it's worth more isn't it i don't know yeah, we'll i find don't out. remember it was one yeah. it was one of the two but yeah. it's I just, I mean, I'm happy to play. I think in general, it was tricky writing down my favorite games because I'm just so happy around here to whenever anybody will play a game with me. It's gotcha. just kind of a joke in our family. Like, go, somebody go and play a game with mom. So she'll play <laughs> um, and it, but it's but it's true. As soon as people are playing games with me, ever I'm I'm back. Everything's good. So um, I'll play. I'll play whatever as long as my son will play with me. Then I'm cool. playing with any character because they're all. They haven't come up with any characters. We're like, uh, um, you know, uh, Alice and Alice in Wonderland. Like she had some cool stuff going on too. So mm -hmm. Alice is cool. She's one of my favorite from the base. Yeah, like the, yeah. The, mitigating the two different effect uh, sizes and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So. It's it's interesting, and I do have to say. Like, I really appreciate that it's a battle game and they fully have female characters represented and it's not just like, okay, which one of these, like, Achilles or what I really, Achilles, we have that set too. And he's super fun to play yeah. in because cool. you just are um, trying to get um, Patrocles killed off the whole time. You're trying to get your side <laughs> killed off, but you have your superpowers. So it's so different. That's funny. Yeah, that's our, different. So it's, it's, I like, I mean. I relate with him a lot. I try to get my sidekicks killed all the time. <laughs> These guys. Cool. No. <laughs> uh, Chris, does that end this one, buddy? No, I actually, I figure we'll all go around with one more normal question. Okay. So uh, speaking of playing with your son, so <clears throat> where do you draw the line on kids games? Like, like where's that line of like, no, I won't play that. Cause it's not even a game. Like, like a mousetrap. I own mousetrap. I, I fought tooth and nail, but eventually I broke down and just decided to make my son happy on like Daniel and oh. bought it for him. Even though I'm like, it's not a game. It's a Rube Goldberg machine for children. It's not a game. So that's what I'm saying. Like, where's that line of like, I won't play it because it's not actually a game. Yeah. First of all, you're, you get some major parent points for doing that. Good for you. <laughs> because we don't, we don't own Mousetrap. That's a, that's a grandparent game. That is at my sure, yeah. house yeah. and they get that out and they play it with the kids. So I do actually, there's, there's actually quite a few games that I refuse to play with them because I'll say we have these better ones. You can, right. my, my general rule is if they can play it on their own, mm. then, then they should for That's a lot a good of them, one. like, don't break the ice. I don't need yeah. to play that with you. I you like can that play game. that game. Mm. Um, if you enjoy the game, great. But if you sure. don't want to. Same thing with Uno. I played some pity games of Uno with my kids for a while, but I just, there are so many other little card games that are very similar to Uno that are so much better. Like Don't Llama is like the, the <laughs> go-to one that people who actually play games will play Don't Llama instead. And my kids really like that one. 
so they can play Uno on their own. So there's there's quite a few. Sometimes I'll play it on my own, but I think it's really good. I, I'll play it with them, but I think it's also really good for me to not have to be involved in every game. So I like to yeah. send them on their way. I like that. Good point. So Anne, um, as you know, the, the hobby continues to grow and it's become this huge industry, uh, but there are still people that uh, I'm sure you run into and I run into all the time when, they, when I say I'm into board games and they go, oh, like Monopoly. And you go, no. What is it you use as your standard example to say that's not Monopoly? You know, for years it was, you know, for me it was Settlers of Catan, but uh, what is it for you? Huh, that's a really good question because especially with kid games, people will say, you know, all the, the, the standard ones and I'll say, no, not quite like that. There's, I don't know that I have a set example. I honestly, I think I might use King Domino quite a bit because it's so easy to say there's this other game that's like dominoes where you put numbers together but there's terrain instead of numbers and you're just matching those up uh but i don't know that i have uh a set one usually if people talk to me about it then they're not getting like a two-minute answer because i get excited <laughs> <Good> <laughs> all the time uh so um but yeah, I don't know what the best example is in kid games. Um, it might be uh, Sleeping Queens is the one with kid uh, games yeah. that yeah. I think has crossed over. And and it seems like whether you do a lot of games or not, people have heard of that one. So that's one that I, I talk about sometimes where I say, oh, like Sleeping Queens, but there's this, 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 and this. Yeah. Uh, but Catan is still really useful. That's still like the one where people are say, oh, that's the next level and i'll say there's a kid version of it you yeah. don't have to play regular katan you can play katan junior but cool. no i just i just talk their ear off about games <laughs> <laughs> all right uh i guess i'll ask one more and then john and then we'll close it out so um how long have you been in the hobby and what was that gateway game that got you into the hobby i don't know that um it was like a we we had um little bits here and there where when my uh like 12 years ago when my husband and I started dating, he had Monopoly deal. And it was, it was, it was great at the time because you didn't have to play Monopoly, but you could still have the familiar experience from your childhood. And it's, it's a much better game. And uh, I have an older brother who brought us Settlers of Catan. And so anything I had access to, I would just play all the time. And so he brought that, he brought a small world and then that was the game we played, but it wasn't like I ever walked into a game store and just was able to get a bunch of games. I didn't really have uh, a group. I think, I think for a lot of people, it helps a lot when you have a group and that's how you got, you get in. It wasn't until I had, um, so it was like, I knew about the games, but we hadn't played a lot of them. And then I had kids and I said, let's play good games together. And I asked people, what should we play? And they said, oh, have you heard of Candyland and Shoots and no. Ladders? And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. There's tons of other ones out there. And so I, um, so that's kind of how the, the channel started too, because I was finding all of these games and I thought parents, it, it's such a good resource Need for to know. parents yeah. yes. to know that you can actually enjoy time with your kids. And then, and not just parents, but just, busy adults too that's where like my my husband and i were at the point where uh we had we had our first three children are only three years apart and it was a very we didn't have a lot of free time in the evenings uh but you know you want to spend quality time together and so all these short adult games uh so i'd say it was around um 2016 where we kind of started checking things out and uh the the big ones for us from the beginning uh were probably lost cities was mm -hmm. a really was a, was a big one that and um and we played azul oh and we had fr we had friends that started to get us in so they introduced us to patchwork and sagrada um but it was only about uh 6 years ago and now i think we have well they're they're <laughs> little they're little games but i think i we were up to about 400 oh so, nice wow Doing. That's okay. more than me. But they're little. Yeah. It barely wow. counts. They're little. That's right. They're so. <clears throat> uh, I've got a real quick, just yes or no question for you, Anne. 
um, because I've been bombarded with this on Facebook that I've been told that shut the box is the best family game available at any price. And so should I invest in this uh, little game where you roll dice and then flip over the numbers that roll? Is that really the funnest game that a family can play? Just wondering. I No. No? <laughs> I'm shocked. <No. laughs> I'm told but five I, times a day it is. But you know what? If, if it'll make it so people will start to play some dice, some games together. Yeah, I think it'll make them stop. For, for you, for you, John, <laughs> uh, no, no, don't, yeah. don't get shot. Don't get yeah. shut the box. Although okay. we have, we have, I was saying we have a pop it version of it called pop the box. Pop the box. And uh, my kids like rolling dice and they can do it on their own. They're playing it on their own. They could play it with there you go. On a trip. So it's just finding the right guy, game for the right uh, group, but that is that is not yeah. not the game for you. Yeah. That's a very diplomatic answer. We don't do that very often around here. <laughs> exactly. Well, Anne, thank you so much for joining us on the hot thank seat. You. I hope yes. you uh, uh, survived and are uh, feeling still, uh, you know, not too uh, overwhelmed. Yeah. No, that was. Yeah, I think I think you guys uh, you asked very nice questions. <laughs> Ask me about well, embarrassing middle school, you know, anything. So we're all good. Next, time. All good. next time you're well, on. Now it's the hotter right. seat. And here we go. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, after we wrap that, that up now, we'll pause for a short commercial break and we will be right back. After these messages, we'll be right back. <laughs> Have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. Or is it? In a new tabletop adventure from around the board, hearken back to the days of yore, where prophecy and attempted murder are in the air. Gather your friends and family for a game of hidden roles in an epic adventure about to be played out. It's Secret Herod. You play as one of two factions, Herod and his army of baby assassins, or as the humble servants of God, including Joseph, Mary, one of three wise men, or a donkey one of which will be randomly assigned possession of baby Jesus. It's a game of intrigue. Will Herod kill the newborn king? Or will he be thwarted as the savior of the world escapes to Egypt? Find out in Secret Herod. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh not included. No donkeys were harmed in the filming of this commercial. And remember, baby Jesus always wins. Uh, we're back. Uh, I did want to tell uh, Anne again that her acronym, Game Like a Mother Glam, was really great. It was actually a lot better than the group that I used to be a part of. It was Fathers Against Rude Television. Fathers Against Rude Television don't want our kids watching Bender's high-definition filth. And for what? Some kind of cheap laugh? That's not what F-A-R-T is all about. No, sir. Not us fathers. Um, so we we moved on from that. So I just <laughs> you did a much better job at it than we did. So. Yeah, you have to pay attention to what it spells. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so let's, it's been a long episode so far, so let's just jump right into it. It's game time. You want to play games? All right. I'll play. Shall we play a game? Randy's the referee. Oh, you mad, bro? <laughs> Where's that last Three. part from? Fight! I think from, it's uh, all from Space Space Jam. Yeah, space Jam uh, is what I was thinking. Yes, that's right. So we're going to do our, our our traditional play shelf trade. Which uh, those of you that have not joined us before, well, shame on you. But uh, play shelf trade is very simple. We're going to come up with three games, and we're going to uh, have each of us decide whether we will play that game right now because it sounds so exciting. We're going to put it on the shelf to keep because it's just amazing, and we want to keep it forever. Or we're going to trade it because yeah, we don't really want it. Uh, and to host play shelf trade is the one, the only, and Scott from Glam Game Might Come Other. And what do you got for us as far as three games? Okay, so the three games I wanted to put up uh, are Welcome to Railroad Inc. and Cartographers. And I thought they all are kind of in the same genre of game, but they're all very unique as well. So uh, Welcome To is a flip and write where you're making your best 1950s style neighborhood uh, and you have to put cards and numbers in sequence on roads and you get bonuses for different items along the way. Railroad Inc., you are trying to make your best grid of uh, your rolling dice and you're trying to make your best network of uh, railroad tracks and highways and connect exits along the way. Um, there are a million expansions to that. Uh, 
And then cartographers, I haven't actually played, but every time I tell people that I play Welcome To or Railroad Inc., they tell me, oh, you should play cartographers. So it's on this list. This is the one where uh, you are a cartographer and the queen has different edicts that you were trying to fulfill over the course of four seasons and different things score per season. And it's you're flipping out cards and putting them down, um, getting to write down, um, make your map. So of these, for me, I would uh, play cartographers because it's it's ridiculous the number of people that have told me that I should play it after I told them about the other two <laughs> games. So I got to play it. And then I would shelf Welcome to because it, it is my favorite game right now. Um, and though even though I really, really do enjoy Railroad Inc., um, my husband beats me at it like every time. So we could <laughs> get rid of that one for at least a little bit. Gotcha. Cool. And who do you want to throw it to? Who do you want to start this? Um, John, why don't you, why don't you take it? I'll do it. Awesome. Um, I was hoping you'd say that because I have some thoughts on these games. First of all, um, I was, I've not been able to play railroad Inc yet because I was late to my appointment at, uh, what is that? CantCon where Anne was hosting railroad Inc. And so I only got to watch it get played. I didn't get to play it. And, uh, but I have, uh, but I w- did stay to win the welcome to segment, but she did not give me any prize whatsoever. So I wanted to be- wanted that on the record. But anyway, <laughs> to get to the actual games, I'm going to play Railroad Inc. because I have been wanting to play it. I watched it played when we were there, and it did look it did look pretty fun. And and on this show, we call these we don't call them flip and fills or roll and runs. It's just verb and verb. That way, it verb covers everything. Verb. This is verb and verb. You do the thing, and then you do the thing. Whatever it is, verb and verb. So. That one's literally rolling right. I think it's the only one that's literally <clears throat> rolling right. And, and, and so Railroad Inc. is the one that, yes, I would want to play that one. Uh, welcome to, I have too much fun with it to trade it away. And I've got the Christmas expansion that I've got to play still this year where you're putting up the Christmas lights on the house. So welcome to, it's so deep in such a simple game because you can, like Chris likes to do, zig when everyone else is zagging. You know, it's like, oh, well, they're getting points this way. Boom, I'm going to come down here and get these points. So there's just so many options each time that something is verbed that you can <laughs> that you can verb something else. So uh, I really like that one. It's, it's so deep. It's so awesome. You can play so many people. I love it. Cartographers. I'm going to have to trade it away. I've played it before, but and I've played it many times, actually. And it's an okay game. The most fun I've had playing it, I've got to say, is when a mutual friend of ours, Danielle Marsh, literally, you're gonna not going to believe this, 3D printed everything you would need and 3D printed little platforms to put everything on so you don't have to write anything and it's so so then someone that can actually you know draw better is going to be oh well it's easier for me to see where my stuff is somebody like me that does it real quick is like i can't remember what that is (laughs) so this way you're putting in color coded and shaped items on your board and it was that was the most fun i've ever had playing it everything else falls short so cartographers bye bye you're too much of a job so moving on to chris what do you think buddy all right, guys. So I'm going to go, first of all, I'm going to say welcome to is my play. And the reason is because I've never played it. Like I'm like, Anne, except with welcome to, I, I don't know. I've, I don't know how I've missed it, but I've never played this game and everyone talks so highly about it. So I'm definitely making that my play. Um, I'm going to shelf cartographers because uh, it was the first verb of verb I played. And so I guess there's that, but I also like the way it, it works and just kind of flows and it plays well. And both Welcome To and Railroad and, and, and Cartographers have the primary thing that makes those good. And that is an infinite number of people can play. <laughs> if you are a verb and verb and you are limited to a number of play, you should be shot. You, you, you have the option. You have the ability to play with every person on this planet at the same time. And you just throw it away. And that makes me angry. So uh, I don't know, just something about the my fascination with this this genre of games, the fact that just an unbelievable amount of people can play them at the same time, largely because it's a derivative of bingo, but we won't talk about that. Um, so uh, I don't know. So when you when you make a verb a verb and it's limited to players, that it just really sets me off and I really don't like it. Um, sorry to the pinball games. Those look cool, but sorry. that You need to play an infinite number of people or I'm out. So trading, uh, trading uh, Railroad Inc., what you got trading Andy? trading the train game that's insane that that is true that might be the first for me <laughs> that is uh so i i had a tough time with this because i like uh i like welcome to i like cartographers i have not played railroad Inc. 
my immediate reaction, usually I'm the kind of guy like Chris that I don't really care too much about the design. I like the mechanics, but I got to tell you, when I saw Railroad Inc. and I've seen it, it doesn't look very pretty. It looks pretty like, I don't know, like graphing paper or something. And I'm, I'm not really, it doesn't exactly make me get all, ooh, goosebumps. I want to play this. However, that being said, I will play it just because I need to play it. So that'll be my play. Then it comes down to getting rid of one of those other two, and that's hard to do, but I am going to keep Cartographers because I think it is by far and away the better game. Welcome to is fine. There's nothing wrong with Welcome to, but Cartographers is a blast. And I love that it adds a little bit of take that to it too with the monsters. Um, and uh, it's just a little bit of just a frustration and a little bit more social aspect to it. The, the one thing we're welcome to suffers a little bit. Like I said earlier, someone mentioned to me they felt like they were taking a math test when they took it. And, you know, depending on the crew that's playing, it can kind of feel like that. It doesn't necessarily have a social aspect to it. So welcome to is fine. And, and, and it's sadly, it's, it's one of my wife's favorite games, but I'm going to, sh- I'm going to trade that one away. and I'm going to put uh, cartographers on the shelf. Daniel, what about you? All right. Well, we have two of my favorite role and verb and verbs on this list. And that is uh, welcome to and cartographers. So by default, uh, railroad ink is going to go. Not only have I not played it, but I, it's really, you got to really twist my arm to get one of these Roland rights played. So if I haven't played it yet, I, I really have no interest in playing it. Again, if it was there, I guess I would. Um, so, but yeah, it's out of there. Now, which one is my favorite? I'm going to say cartographers. And usually the rule is like, if it's your favorite, you should put it on your shelf because you're going to keep it on your shelf forever. But I'm going to say play because I desperately want to play my expansions to cartographers. They keep coming out with new maps that change the game ever so slightly, give you new challenges, new roles. And I've only played it once and there's three maps. I need to play Cartographers, and I need to play it now. I love the game. I love everything about it. Um, also, my wife enjoys that one the most as well because she does a, a lot better with the visual aspects of these games than with the numbers. Welcome to is a enjoyable game. I love it. It's my second favorite, so it will be. It's going to stay on my shelf as well. But um, I'm going to get Cartographers played more often. And were you I want to play it more often? Were you serious about right now? What? <laughs> Like I was oh. gonna leave and go play it with you right now. <laughs> yeah, come on over. Okay. Okay. I thought you had to be in your studio. I, know what's going on. <laughs> I just thought he got hot. He started taking it off. Yeah, like he nope. took off for the. He, he said right now. He said let's play right yeah. now. I need it right now. Like, okay. No one questioned that. Andy just started wandering around the room. I know. And all of you guys yep. were like, okay, sure, uh, <laughs> whatever. Uh, Daniel goes uh, AFK all the time for his dog. Yeah. That's true. Well, she has to make an appearance on the show every now and then, so I true. have to go grab her. But you know, Chris, after Andy said that uh, railroad rate, uh, railroad ink what? is the ugliest game he's seen. Does that change your mind at all? Does there you go. It's ugly and it's more trendy. desirable to you. <laughs> so no, honestly, like I actually think the game is pretty aesthetically appealing. Now that might be saying something about me. But that's really not a joke. That's really not stick. Like I actually like the way the game looks. So I don't know. Like and 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 the uh, the dice that come with it are kind of like dice made out of that same plastic like the 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 tiles for azul so like it's actually really gratifying and feels really good and then i'm not super proponent of playing it digitally but of games anyways but this one on ios i actually have played it a lot and it's great okay cool oh yeah Yeah. it has a really good app it has a really good app now i will say that one thing that needs to be said here um, is if you're going to play any of these flip and fills or roll and rights, you verb. need to go to the best one ever, which is not on this list. And that is twice as clever. If you guys have not played twice that as clever. That is clever. good. That is good. I so haven't. Good. And I keep on hearing about that too. Riding, riding down. What's it? It's like the German, the German um, name. Yeah. There's the a one. German name. I don't know what it is. It's all right. It's no theme at all. But I love Germans, you, but not that You much. really should play cartographers. So write that one down. The bad part about <laughs> cartographers is, like I was saying, I'm not real good at, at you know, filling in all the things. So then you're supposed to draw a monster on somebody's board. And you get someone like Daniel or somebody else that's been neurotically, you know, making their things look just great. And you scribble this monster on there. They're like, you ruined my board. It looks terrible. Like, well, I literally put lines well, mine and triangles John. for trees. Like <laughs> <laughs> Now, the other one, have you guys played? The other one that I've always heard was the best one all, other than, you know, I think Twice Clever is, but I haven't played it, is uh, Fleet, the dice game. Is that amazing has anybody played that it's on my shelf i need yeah, to get it i know daniel has it okay That's ryan lotkey isn't that he's he's like yeah we really like him um yeah. no 
Well, All very right. good. Well, hey, let us know in the comments below which you would play Shelf Trade. And don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons as we continue playing the game. And it's time for round four. Fight! All right, guys, we are going to be talking about playing games with the family since we have Anne from Game Like a Mother on here and she specializes in games under 20 minutes that are great to play with both kids and extended family. We thought we would talk about our experiences, pros and cons. Do we like it? Is it worth it? Um, should you just hang out with your family instead of playing games? Uh, so let's hear all of our opinions and let's go ahead and start with John. Actually, we've started with John before. Yeah, no, it's we're going around the board. It just what is what it is. Go, John. All right, thank you. <laughs> I guess we'll start with me. We'll do it live. All right. okay. Let's... <laughs> do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. Thank you, Andy. I'm writing it right now. All right, playing with family. At, at this can take on many things, as we talked about in the uh, production meeting, where you can talk about your immediate family, your extended family, what have you. We're kind of encompassing all of that right here because with my immediate family, mostly who all I play with is just my wife, and so. Yeah, that's probably some games in there that are in common with uh, Anne and I, as far as games that I would play with her, because it's it's going to reach a certain level of weight and she's, she's not going to want to play it anymore. She doesn't like anything to be ultra competitive. She doesn't like anything to be ultra long, ultra deep, any of that. So it's, but on me, I want it to have a theme. So we, we play things like, as I've been told, it's pronounced Takanoko, not Takanoko. <laughs> so we'll play things like that. That's about the right weight, you know, kind of the low end of the midweight is what I'll play with my wife if I can sneak that in there. And uh, tiny towns, things of that nature. With my kids, I have two kids that are uh, almost teenagers now, and we don't play that much together. We'll play the unmatched now. They like ganging up on that and the unmatched. So that's fun. And they'll do that. It's quick. It's fun. You got that. Now that Marvel came out with the Marvel unmatched, they like doing those. And this shogun game that i just recently got i don't know if you watch i've got a video on that where i unbox this game from 1986 that's never been played so i've got that all ready to play now and so they're, they're both kind of excited about that one which i'm surprised that's probably going to be a two and a half hour game so but they love the look of it and uh they remember when i used to have one go back and see the story on another video that i that I, well, that I do about it where i used to have one now i've got it back so mostly my gaming and family is extended family sisters brothers nieces nephews that are adults now and that's really where i want to say 80 percent of my really good plays come from and so playing with them it doesn't have to be family weight so that's i mean i think i've count myself really lucky because a lot of people don't have that a lot of people don't have an extended family that they can meet up with that live locally with them that basically any weekend i want to i can throw it out there on a social media and somebody's going to be able to get together for a decent game at least midweight or what have you and they're always up for learning new games we uh, my sister was dying for the village uh, recently. And then, yeah, Daniel gave me his copy and I was able to give it to her for Christmas last year. We played that. That's the kind of weight I'm talking about. It can be anything. So gaming with family. I love it because I, that's most of my games and I, I love gaming with my family. So Chris, what do you say, buddy? Why do you hate gaming with your family? <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I don't hate gaming with my family. In fact, I actually really enjoy it. It's, it's very gratifying, but I, I I gotta I gotta say this. We we gotta come to terms with this term family weight. Oh, I thought you were gonna say family. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's you're making a concession. Every time you play one of these games, you're making a concession. Like either you're giving up complexity for a child or for a casual person that doesn't really like games, that has a mind like a child, apparently. But <laughs> But, but like way to alienate uh half the audience chris that's fine that's fine because, exactly i am a game snob uh don't be a casual work hard get in there and play the hard 18x games you no, gotta wear a tux I mean, if you're gonna play a game with chris don't bring none of this casual attire that's right exactly <laughs> i actually like that idea a lot um anyways we should have a formal sometime uh, yeah, uh, it's formal game. Uh, <laughs> anyways no i mean i do enjoy them I mean, and I've, i found some recently that i really do like like camel up man i did a video on the 12 days of christmas about it and i don't know that game is just great so there there are some ones out there but like for me even then like Camel Up may be the only one that I actually know of that I'm like, even if not, if I'm all gamers, I'm still interested in playing because it just flows so well. But most of those games, it's like, I enjoy this game. It's fine. 
and it will be awesome to play with my family or son because I get to play with them. But the game itself is, eh, right? Like, so uh, it's it, it's a whole thing. But I, I do enjoy it. It just takes finding the right game, which is part of the reason I was so excited that Anne was on here in that we get to learn more about these kind of games. Like I, I talked about earlier, that Cinco Linko game. Like I watched her video and I was like, this game sounds awesome and I'm looking forward to get it. So, um, you know, I, I'm all for it. It, it is the the pinnacle for me. If I can play with my wife and I can play with my son, it's not going to get better. Love you guys, but whatever. I'd rather play with them every day of the week. So, uh, so I'm all for it. But it it, it is sometimes there's some some um, uh, I don't know give and take I guess with it. But um, I you know it, it's what I want to do, but at the same time not what I want to do. <laughs> what about you, Andy? <laughs> That's part of the timer. <laughs> I had to let the timer Time's finish up, again. Andy. Sorry, it's, it's unfortunately, but yeah. Anyway, that's your time. I, yeah, it is, it is my time. That is true. If I just want to play the timer the entire time, I can do that. <laughs> um, so here's the deal. I, I think this is another future segment at some point, but I feel like uh, there, there's this improv game that you play where you say, uh, "You might be this if blank, right?" And so uh, you might be a board game geek if you show up to family events with a big bag of games that you know will probably not get played. And that's me at every family event. I bring a big old, it used to be a Tupperware tub, now it's one of those beautiful uh, boardgametables.com, hashtag not a sponsor, uh, bags. And uh, uh, yeah, I bring I bring all these games and I open it up and I show them and they're like, I don't know, Andy, let's just play spades. Um, or, or let's just, uh, you know, whatever. And so... <sighs> I, I get uh, I get a little frustrated when when we when I first got into the hobby, our our family was actually pretty good about playing games. We played a lot of Settlers of Catan. We played Ticket to Ride. We played uh, uh, we played Shadows over Camelot. I remember playing that one. And and it's a co-op. Did you hear that? I played a co-op. Wow. My goodness, that's, that's crazy. Anyway, um, but then as my as my parents have gotten older, uh, uh, they don't like to learn things as much, and so they just want to keep it real basic. The other thing is my brother is an accountant, and he's super good with numbers so he and he's and we both have this kind of stubbornness in us so if we're playing a game and he can figure out uh part way through that he's not gonna win he's just like i'm done he doesn't want to finish it and i'm like okay come on man and then he thinks i'm you know as as i'm prone to do he thinks i'm trolling him and egging him on to play the game because i'm all giddy that i'm gonna beat him and so it, it's uh, it sometimes doesn't turn pretty but uh what I found the most successful as far as family games is going to be uh, stuff like uh, party games, Time's Up, uh, Crosstalk is a, is a fantastic one. Um, and there's some other lighter games. But yeah, as far as the heavy stuff or, or even medium stuff, eh, I have a hard time getting to play with, with extended family. Now, I love playing it with my immediate family, like Chris said. So there you have it. Uh before we hear from Ann, uh, Andy, I'm surprised your brother doesn't just, or before we hear from Daniel, I'm surprised we don't do what you're, you don't, your brother doesn't do what you do. If you're losing a game, you just make up some rule and ask somebody to prove it's not in there in the rule book. <laughs> I, I'm sure I can do this. I'm I don't positive make up I rules. I just look very deeply to see if I can find a rule that circumvents what's currently going on. I'm sure I've done this before. I'm sure it's in the rules. Just there, It's got to be there. It's got to, because I want to do it. I'm, I'm going to think and make it happen. <laughs> All right, all right. So, Daniel, what do you got? Uh, no, you're good. Uh, so playing games with the family, I'm going to start with all with my immediate, then my wife. Well, sorry, my kids, then my wife, then my uh, extended family. So kids uh, are fine to play with, but there's it's exhausting. It's taxing. Like my child who loves to play games and is a really good kid. He has so much energy. He can't sit down. I actually have to take the chair away from him when we play board games and make him stand up, which sounds cruel, but it is not. He we plays video games standing up 100% of the time. And if he's in a chair he literally gets tangled up into it it's tiring it's exhausting so i love playing with him and i would play with him every single day but i do have to have energy to do that so that's that's one thing about playing with a family another one is my wife i will play any game with my wife any game she wants if she's ever like i want to play i will bust it out right now except that's never happened before uh she does play <laughs> games with me but she'll never tell me which game to play but she's definitely my favorite opponent to play against though she does suffer from ap kind of like andy so sometimes I am like, Sarah, just you just got to make a decision. But hers isn't a decision because, you know, she wants to win. Hers is a decision because she just doesn't like making decisions. Uh -huh. So she, sometimes she's like, can you just tell me what to do? I'm like, no, just, just play the card, please. <laughs> and then my extended family, I play with them, but I try to keep it to a minimum because they always are like, what games did you bring today, Daniel? But if they do not ask me to play a game, I won't play a game with them because I never want to feel like I'm press, uh, 
pressing games on people. Uh, I hate being in that situation. Um, but but we do. We've gotten to the point now where we play a lot more games with Sarah's family. Uh, and then my sister and her family, they love games. So we just play whatever, like instantly when they come into our house, we're like games immediately. So uh, but I, just, I do want to highlight the games that we play mostly with my wife's family. And that is The Crew. They absolutely love it. They want to play it every single time. Time's Up is also the other go-to because we get like 20 people playing that game and it's a blast. And then the other one lately has been Stick'em, which is a really cool card game where you're trying to get, like get take tricks, but then you're trying to stick them with the color they don't want. Anyways, those are my good ones. So, And we're, well, we've all been waiting for. Yeah, What's Daniel. Your- Okay, well, I'll, I'll follow up after Ann. I'll follow up with Daniel after Ann. Go ahead, Ann. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. You won't need to because I'll have it all covered. Don't oh, worry. Yeah. I like um, it. I like it. So, so my take on gaming, in particular with extended family and around the holidays where you have these long family gatherings, is what are you going to be doing otherwise if you're not playing a game? I'm not great at sitting around and chatting for hours. I need an activity. <laughs> I need something for us to do. And the beauty of board games is it is, it's it's an activity for like a present. It's an activity that you can wrap up in a box and give to somebody. Uh, so at these events, if you pick the right one, I think that's the thing everyone kind of hit on here. We're just find the game that's appropriate to your audience. There are so many great social games out there now. No offense to apples to apples, but you can do so much more. Uh, We were just in uh, Boise for a week visiting family for Thanksgiving. And uh, we played poetry for Neanderthals, which I don't know if you guys have heard of. It's the one of the new Exploding Kittens uh, games. And you just have to use one syllable words to describe things, uh, which is harder than you think. And we had multi-generation sitting around laughing together, playing a game and making memories together. Most of my memories growing up, it didn't have to be a great game. We played rummy games at family gam- gatherings. Those are a lot of my memories with my grandparents. Uh, and and for going to these things, like we're especially with people that you don't necessarily see all the time. Uh, it's great. We had teenage, I have teenage nieces and nephews and I like them a lot. I don't really know what to say to the teenage nieces and nephews sometimes. Yeah. So if we have a game to play together, they loved uh, Take Five. Uh, that was oh, just yeah. really easy Great to one. teach. It played really well, but it was in, it was interesting and strategic for, for everyone involved because they do play a lot of games. So there's so much value. I like I like it kind of you, you, we've done things where we've put too difficult of a game. I think that's the the cardinal sin that most people who play a lot of games play. They say, oh, this is so easy. And then they bring it and you realize, oh, nope, nope, nope. This was up a couple <laughs> levels. Everyone was a good sport. We need to bring it back down a little bit. But there's yeah. so much value. I love getting to play with, with really anybody. Extended family, great. And yeah, my favorite is just my own family, my own kids. I have... Um, my oldest son is 10 and I do not have a lot in common with the 10 year old boy anymore. <laughs> we don't <laughs> have a lot. He's really into Pokemon and I am supportive, but, uh, it is, it is not my, my jam, but we can sit and talk about unmatched for ages. And so just the board games, it is amazing what they can do to bring people together. So I think it's worth it. You, you try to hit where people will enjoy it. And if you do, then they'll keep on asking for it. And it's super worth it. Nice. Cool. Very well, cool. thank you for that. So John, I do want to say uh, about you, uh, you said uh, you play with your family. I just wanted to point out that I think uh, I'm glad you said nice things about your family. Cause I'm pretty sure they constitute 80% of our viewership. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> like every day there's like a new comment. That's like, that's John's family. Oh my gosh. Yep. Like, how many of them are that's out true. there? The Tice and, ones. Uh, and, They're and everywhere. Aaron, I did want to tell you uh, what if you don't know what to do when you're with a family and you're not playing games because you don't have much to talk about. This game right Please? here, Marvel Snap. <laughs> oh, I keep on hearing about that. It goes, that. I'm afraid it goes where you go, oh, and it's gosh. wonderful. Is it? Daniel, a that, game people think that's a sponsor, but much as much as you talk about that, I don't care. Exactly. It's free. I'm chilling. Trust me, the video call would be way better if that was a sponsor. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I have to ask you a question, Dana. You said that you don't want to, you were like, I don't want to be known as the guy who's forcing people to play games. Have you been accused of being a, a, a board game proselytizer? <laughs> no, no, I haven't been accused. I just don't, well, kind of. My When I was, it, it, that's like childhood trauma right there. Sometimes I got accused of being too obsessed with my hobbies. So like now as I've gotten older, I really try to not push it upon people. I'll talk about it, but I'm not going to force them to do these things when I know they're not gamers. So I'm but all the people that work under you, all the people that work under you do get grilled about their gaming habits and they know what you like. So that is true. They are just by default. To they're kind of being pressured right. into it. <laughs> yeah. If if anybody out there watching this show has a board game store and they're looking to hire someone to run their store, Daniel is the guy. I will always say that because yeah. you are the most friendly, happy go lucky person when when recommending games, not when yes. playing. Them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not that friendly. No. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you're you're, you're, you're average. <laughs> oh, right. hey! It's time to announce the winner. I believe it is. That's right. And the winner of today's show is well, it is Chris and Anne. So, what are we going to do? How are we going to break this tie? That's pretty amazing. Yeah, I think we're just going to let them both have their say. Would be a good idea. Well, no, we've had tiebreakers before, but they, yeah. we're already going a little long. So, what if we just say Anne gets the final say? I mean, that'll work. Legitimately, no, we it's tried. Right. We tried. Here, I'll just, I'll just say a quick thing, and then Chris can. Could we're not? Yeah. We don't need to give me the the victory. I'm fine with. Um, we, we can both. Here, is this and, one of those? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is this rules. one of those things like the at the end of the Euro games where it says if you're tied, everyone's a winner. The shared yeah. victory. Yeah. No, no. Shared and victory. here, I got a, I got a key for you. Just say that. Um, Axis and Allies is your favorite game of all time, and I guarantee you'll win. Because <laughs> Randy is, loves that game. <laughs> that is, but that's not that's not true. It's that's not going to happen. Oh. Um, and this is the winner. Yeah. <laughs> hey! well, that happened. <laughs> that did it. Okay. All right. Let's All right. this. Chris, oh. go ahead and give your like give a minute or so, and then Anne will follow up. We'll let you right. sit in okay. the spotlight. All right. So, anyways, yeah, that was that was a funny, interesting turn of events. <laughs> I tried to give it to Anne and took it away from her. No, uh, so, so, anyways, okay. I'm. This is a follow up to the last one where I said we need to come to terms with the fact that there are those games on our shelves that we want to be great and we believe they're great and they're not, and we just need to move on from them. You can do that, or you can absolutely turn this community upside down by fixing bad games that's right you are not bound to the rules in the box if you need to change them to make the game better or more interesting do it so this is going to take some time i don't know how long it's going to be but i'm committed to fixing i forgot the game name merchant (laughs) and marauders i'm Uh. convinced i'm committed to fixing that game so i don't know what will happen but at some point on this show or a separate video, I am going to come to you with my fixed rules for that game oh, okay. to make it better, quicker, faster, all those things to my opinion. So very good. I want to let you know that's where we're at. And and take us home. Cool. All right. Um, Actually, I love that because I'm going to continue on with that idea because especially I play, I'd say 80% of my games I get to play are kid games because that's, that's who I play with. Right. And you get very used to that with kid games. You say, we're just going to show the cards. We're going to just do whatever we need to do to make this work. And I think that as long as everybody has the same understanding, that's good because the goal for me, the goal is for everyone to enjoy playing the game. If we find out, if I find out that somebody has, uh, what is it? Analysis paralysis where they can't, then, then a lot of times we just pick a different game because, then they'll, then they'll do better. And so the goal is you're trying to make sure everyone is having a fun time playing games. That's my overall goal. And if I know people are having a fun time, then they'll come back and play more games with me because really that's all I want. Uh, so if we, if we can figure that out, if everybody has a good time, then you are set up for success. Awesome. I, I think I uh, Daniel, uh, AKA muffin top had something he wanted to say. <laughs> yeah that was some nice midriff you showed there buddy oh man <laughs> i'll have to i'll have to censor it out no i was just gonna i was gonna say uh chris this is your uh fix right here this oh, what's game. that what's it called uh, it's called it's called uh dead, dead reckoning? reckoning yeah so okay. i have to play that before you put too much energy into fixing a game 
that's yeah. been replaced. <laughs> that's been replaced. I, I mean, that's fair. I, I will say though, qu- by the way, quick, th- this is actually something that I've wanted to do forever. So again, as much as I say older games are better, again, I've also admitted on the show at some point in the past that back in the day, there was less good games. This is part of the reason we play the same ones over and over because there weren't that many coming out that were actually any good. But in the same way, we would still buy games and hope that they were. And I know all the time, my friend that I cut my teeth with playing games with, James, we'd play a game and we'd sit back and be like, there's a good game in there. I don't know what I need to do to fix it and make it good, but it's in there somewhere. Yeah. And then we would just shelf it and never play it again. So so this is something I've actually personally want to do forever is find those games and fix them and make them great. So that's part of it. But I do want to play Dead Reckoning. That's a total topic too, is we should get to into the topic of house rules because yeah. Yeah. that's something that with, with the proliferation of so many games now, I don't do that as much, but yes, in the old days when there were only a select few games, we're like, okay, we're going to make this a house rule because we just know it's better when we do this. Okay. Yep. Good the idea. ultimate and example of that is we all had house rules for Monopoly, right? I mean, free parking sure. and it made the game horrible. Yeah, that's it's probably true. I, I'm glad you mentioned about playing, uh, you know, your whole goal is just to get people playing games with with you because i think we can all relate with that i mean and, and if you're not a real gamer watching this like i sorry i don't mean that in a pretentious way but like if you're not like full into the hobby and you're not yeah, like constantly, i know i just mean that's how you make a gamer in your life happy just play games with them like that's yep. all you need to do <laughs> yeah cool yeah exactly. all right to close all things right. out do we have some birthdays to celebrate yeah and why don't you talk about that last one on the list it's one of your favorites <gasps> Oh my goodness, Dice Throne uh, came out in 2017. It is five years old and it is vying with Unmatched for um, one of my favorite games Ooh, these wow, days. Wow, that's awesome. Okay. Cool. All right, I'll talk about uh, Raiders. Ra- I believe that's Raiders of the North Sea. Came out in uh, 2013. It is nine years old. I've not played Raiders of the North Sea, but I have played Raiders of Scythia, which I've told is very similar. And Raiders of Scythia is amazing. It's one of the best games that I've played that I do not own. So happy birthday, nine years old, Raiders in the North Sea. Indeed. And happy, happy birthday to Roll for the Galaxy, which is eight years old. It came out in 2014. I'm, I'm surprised it's been around that long, actually. It doesn't seem like it was that new. Or, I mean, it seems like yeah. it was newer than that. But, uh, you know, oh. it's a game that uh, I've only played once or twice, and it's fine. But it didn't need to be made because Race <laughs> for the Galaxy is just fine. I love Race for the Galaxy. It needed to be wow. made. I'm glad it was made. And it's Happy birthday. You should have never been born. else with Galaxy in its name. <laughs> <laughs> Until they have Snap Galaxy. Yes. I'll play it. <laughs> well, we want to thank everybody who's joined us on the show, especially our special guest, yes, Ann. Thank you, Ann. Scott, thank Ann. you, Ann. Remember Ooh, to check out you. Ann's YouTube channel, Game Like a Mother, Glam, on YouTube. It's uh, also GameLikeAMother.com uh, or at Game Like a Mother at YouTube. And uh, we just are so grateful for you to take your time to uh, put up with us, and uh, hopefully we haven't uh, uh, bored you to death. This has been so much fun, you guys. I could talk board games all day. This is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Thank you, Ann. And thanks to all our wonderful viewers out there. Remember to tap those like and subscribe buttons and also be sure to join our Facebook group Around the Board. Send us an email at mail at aroundtheboard.net or reach out to us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. And until next time, we'll see you around the board. Is, is, so is there a feed of just people eating Tic Tacs on TikTok? I, never even I think thought about so. This Wait, don't you, is, is it Tic Tacs that if you mix that with Pepsi or something, they just kind of blow up or whatever? I, I believe that's uh, Mentos. 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 Okay. Or dry ice. Dry ice is the same thing. And I'm here with Topher Hernandez, and he is a part of our podcast, and an intricate part of that he is. And he's going to do a rapid fire play shelf trade on every play shelf trade we've done thus far. Topher, go. Okay, we got Blood Rage, Ethnos, and Root. Blood Rage, I'm keeping. Ethnos, I'm playing that as soon as I can. Root, who needs that trash? Oh. Okay, Zulkin, Lost Roots of Barnack, <laughs> Lords of Water Deep. Lords of Water Deep, it's played out for me. I'm done with that. Mm. Tolkien is Zulkin is the one I want to play the most. Lost Runes Arnak, I love it. I want to keep it and play it all the time. Okay. Blood Bowl, first in roll, football highlights. I don't want any of these. Oh, <laughs> man. Screw all that trade. Noise. All trade. <laughs> all right, we got Twilight Imperium 4, Gaia Project, Star Wars Rebellion. Star Wars Rebellion is the one I want to play the most by far. Twilight Imperium, it's perfect. 
just for the dream, putting it on the shelf and looking at it. One day, it will happen. <laughs> yes. Gaia Project, I just don't, I just don't have the time or effort to be able to do that. But you do for Twilight Imperium. Yeah, ticket to ride. <laughs> hey, don't question my integrity. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have none. All right. <laughs> We got Ticket to Ride, Ride the Rails, 1846, 18XX game, get the heck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> ride the Rails, I do really legitimately want to play. Ticket to Ride is a classic, you have to have Man, that on the shelf. Perfectly played. And Denver, Eclipse, Elysium, <laughs> Eclipse, um, I, will, I do want to play it again, but we got to be talking about second edition, no one wants to yeah. play that first one. And Denver is something, one of the most well-balanced games, you're always getting consistent play of it, so I'm going to keep that on my shelf. Where are you going to play it at? Uh, in Denver? Thank you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Elysium. Uh, that is, I don't need that. All right. Last one. Seven Wonders, I have a cat. It's a wonderful world. Seven Wonders to me is actually the most balanced game I've ever played. So I have a very soft spot for that. That's going on my shelf for sure. Okay. Isle of Cats is always fun to play. It's a good way to invite new people in the hobby. Mm -hmm. So there. It's a wonderful world. I'm sorry. Oh, You're gone. Oh, man. And so are you, Topher. <laughs>